Jim Hacking. Let me know if you can hear me. I got my new microphone. Hopefully you all can hear me. Today is the 20th of April, 420. Hope you all are doing well. Hope all is well in your world. We're very glad to be here with you today. If everybody could let me know that you can hear me, I'd appreciate it just so that I know. All right, Brittany's got me. Everyone, go ahead and let me know where you're watching from. Let me know how the audio sounds. I'd love to know if the song, sound sounds better or the same. I spent a little bit of dough on a new microphone. I hope it's sounding good. I hope it's sounding good. All right, all right. Um, we're going to go the full hour today. I am leaving town tomorrow. I will be gone. Um, if you uh, want to let me know where you're listening from, I'll give you a shout out. would be glad to see all of you and hear from all of you. Let me know where you're watching from. Uh, we're going to go the full hour, like I said, and then we'll be off until Monday. I'm going to be pretty much off the grid for a few days, which I am very excited about. Go ahead. Let's see. Size in Seattle. Kosh says hello. Sophia's in Ohio. Bernard can hear me. Fatuma, always good to see you, Fatuma. I miss you. I hope you're well. Rocio's watching in Ohio, as she often does. Nine to nine is watching from Toronto. Um, Fatuma says this is her favorite show. Glad to hear it, Fatuma. Uh, all right, all right. We got some people in the waiting room. Let me go ahead and post one more time. Um, a lot of exciting things in the making Looks like we're going to be hiring a full-time videographer, so I should be getting more videos out to you. Our marketing team is excited about that. Um, we've got a lot going on that I can't wait to tell you about. A lot of good success stories, a lot of good client success stories. Um, we are loving life. Fatuma will be back soon. We will see her soon. Let's go ahead and say hi to Neil. Hi, Neil. Oh, Neil's locked up. Brima's here. Hi, Brima. Hello. Salam How are you? Welcome, Salam. Uh, uh, happy Ramadan, Karim. Thank you, my brother. Same to you. Yes. Thank you. Um, yeah. Last week I was here and um, I, 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 I couldn't ask my all my questions. Okay, go um, for it. So, okay. So the question that I wanted to ask was, um, so when I filed the M, um, N four hundred. Um, I yeah. added my children, and so um, they were part of the process. So I wanted to ask, um, like, and they are under 18. So I don't know if I can file, I mean, uh, what you call, I mean, uh, I can get a passport for them. Like, is it? Where, where are your children? Are they in the United States? No, they are in Ghana. Yeah, so whether or not they are a U.S. citizen takes a little bit of math and a little bit of research. It'll depend on how long you lived in the United States. Um, well, I've then, been I've been here. Um, it's um, let's say ten years or nine nine years. Yeah, I've so they might they, they they might be citizens by operation of law. I'd have to do some research and look at all the dates and everything. I can't just tell you for sure that yes, they're entitled to a passport. They probably. Uh, might be, but I don't know for sure. Oh, okay. Um, there's a whole there's a whole calculation that you have to do in order to figure out whether or not somebody is a U.S. citizen or not through the naturalization of their father. If they're overseas, um, they might be a citizen or they might not. It depends. Okay. Um, and also, how long does um? Like the estimated time that I one thirty, um, you know, takes. Like if you yeah. So what? What country are they in? Um, Ghana. Oh, Ghana. Right. You said that. Um, yeah. Probably start to finish a year and a half. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah. Thank you. That 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 was, that was just my question that I wanted to ask. Thank you. I really Bye, appreciate it. See you, buddy. You All so right. like him. See ya. All right, look who's here. It's our old friend Corey. <laughs> What's up? Corey new. Corey new, not Corey hey. old. <laughs> All right, man. So What's uh going on? immigration's let me down. My wife, it's been four months. My wife still has no social security number. I contacted immigration. They said go to Social Security. I contacted Social Security and they said go to immigration. 
Did she get a green I'm, card? She has a green card. So why not just go to the Social Security office and play dumb and act like you never requested and just make a new application for a Social Security card? I can do that. I can play dumb. Yeah. I wouldn't. I, I, would, <laughs> I don't know if you can play dumb as well as I can, but um, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I would just show up there and say, hey, uh, yeah, my wife, this is her green card. This is her passport. This is our marriage license. She wants to get a Social Security number. What do we do? Okay. I'll have a, an application filled out ahead of time and just go there yeah. and play dumb and see what happens. All right. That's, yeah, just, that's... That, I, like, I like the idea of having the application done ahead of time. Just slide it over there and see what they do. Okay. All right. All right. I can do that, uh, and I'll let you know what happens because uh, I'm tired of waiting. Keep us posted. I mean, you're right. I mean, I remember you calling in when she got here in December, and I was like, holy shit, that was four months ago. I mean, it, to me, it went like that. I don't know about you, yeah. but for me, it did for sure. Well, actually, it has been pretty fast. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right, man. Bye, right, buddy. Bye, Corey. See you, buddy. Thanks, man. Bye. All right. See ya. Yep. Bye. All right. Remember, if you want to come on camera, I need to see you on screen. Oh, Sophia's here, and I have an answer to her question. I have an answer to her question. Hi, so, Jim. Hi, Sophia. So Sophia's question is, if somebody's a U.S. citizen and their mom is living overseas and mom marries a dude and the dude then becomes the stepdad of the U.S. citizen, can the U.S. citizen sponsor the stepdad for a green card, right? Yeah. All right. So I told Andrew I want to start a new segment on the show called Stuff Jim doesn't know, or stump Jim, or something funny like that, where I can poke or fun of myself. Law school uh, questions. Like, yeah, yeah. This will be a law, law school, school question. questions, right? Exactly, yes. right. Well, so Andrew did some Andrew did some research, and here's the deal: the stepchild step parent relationship has to be created before the person the the child is 18. So it's true whether they're the sponsor or the beneficiary. So, like a a stepfather, let's say it was reversed. Let's say the stepfather was the U.S. citizen, but the kid was over 18. It wouldn't work. So here, what's going to have to happen is stepson can sponsor mom for a green card. Then once she gets approved, she can come over here, get her green card, and apply for the for the dad for the stepdad. Mm, so she still have to go back and marry him and do the whole bit again. Yeah. So I mean, she can get married at any point. Mm. She can get married now or later. That part doesn't matter. But as far as the son the stepson can't give any benefits to the stepdad only the only the mom can after she gets them from the son oh uh, okay i'll have him um listen to this and he'll sort yeah. his information i have another quick question um sure i am trying to change my address i just moved my house is in a chaos uh my on my n400 and i have my i751 pending with my n400 but the, it's only giving me the address hyperlink under the N four hundred. Um, you know when you would sign into your profile online. So okay. if I so when I go add, it'll tell you you know add the EAC number, the I seven fifty one, the state where you originally filed, and then yeah. I get my N four hundred. Uh, would it automatically update under the N four hundred, or do I have to do a separate address change for the N four hundred? Separate address change. Separate ad. I was thinking about that. So I answered I would, my own question. I would do it on paper. Do it on paper, not online. Yeah. Send in two different ones on paper. Yeah. Make sure you have proof that you sent it. All right. Awesome, Jim. Thank you so much and have a good day. Oh, one curious question. Sure. Are you Muslim? Yeah, I am. Why? Oh, I am too. Oh, yeah. I converted 25 years ago. That's why I'm fasting and that's why it's I'm having Ramadan fun and my friends like to tease me about Ramadan, Jim. They think I get crabby around four o'clock. So you'll probably see me yell at somebody today on the show. I'll try not oh, well, to. Don't I'll... worry about it. Tell them you have like uh, Mufti Meng said, you have a date waiting for you. It's that date. You're going to break I your do. fast with. I do. I do have a date <laughs> waiting for me. Seven. I see tonight, 743 where I am. How about you? I think uh, it's uh, 822 today. Ooh. Yeah. So when I converted. Ohio, so that's why. When I. When I converted, it was 4.45 in the afternoon, and I thought that was hard. Well, it, it changes as the year. It will meet us up in winter one day, and we're going to be breaking yeah. fast at 4.15. Yep. <laughs> yep, yep. It'll be great. Yeah, so but we're I was, getting I here. I was explaining that to my daughter the other day, and she was like, wow, that's pretty great. Yeah, yeah. So is your wife Muslim too or just you? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, so our whole is there family. Any is. Special reason why you converted, or it really got to you? That's a long story. Um, I grew oh. up Catholic. I thought I was going to be a priest, and then when I wasn't going to be a priest, then I started exploring other things. So, how does your dad and your family take that? Yeah, so that's that's something I'd try not to talk about too much publicly, but I would just say it was it was rocky for a little bit, but now it's all good. All right, good for you. Well, well, so so I'm like um, Welcome, Salam. Thanks, Sophia. Yeah. Jim, bye bye. See ya. All right, all right. That's Jim talking about himself as usual on the damn show. Let's say hi to Neil. Hi, Neil. Hi, good afternoon, Jim. Salam alaikum. Welcome, Salam. How you doing, bud? It looks, it looks like you're at the mall or something. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm in my hobby, so it's good. I just asked you a question about the related to asylum. Okay. Is there just any changes since last week? Because I got the call from my lawyer, and she mentioned me there is a no chances to like you know to asylum gonna be proceed. Like I've been applied for like more than five years. So she asked me if you wanna get married or if you have any other plans. Just let me know. And I spoke with one more, one of my friend, and he said they signed the paper, and they said you can stay in the America, you will get the work permit all time, but you cannot leave this country. So is this that true? Dude, I don't understand at all what you're talking about. So we got to back up a little bit. So you have a pending asylum case. Yes. What country are you from? India. Okay, and so you have a pending asylum case from India, and that's mm. been pending for five or six years. What, uh, five what years. has five years? What has changed in the last five years? I don't know. I don't know what's or what's what changed last week. I guess is what I'm asking. Yeah. So, so thing is that, so the, my lawyer, my attorney, she said the SLMs they had made changes on the law. So if you if you sign one paper, then it been it been said you can stay here forever. They're not gonna deport you, and you will get extension of EAD. You can live forever here, and no need to be go to see the judge and all stuff. You get what I'm trying to say? You're saying that the the lawyer says if he signs some form, you can get like withholding of removal, and then you get a work card. Yeah, I have work card, but I'm just confused about any changes on the SLM. The simple question is know. any changes. I don't. I don't know of any, no. Okay, okay, that's that, that's all I have for you. Okay, nothing, nothing easy. crazy. Thanks, yeah, Neil. Okay, bye. Thank bye. you. Bye. See ya. All right, let's say hi to Hassanur. Hi, Hassanur. Uh, hi. Thank you for taking the call. Um, so I have a question about um, in terms of like wait times for uh, like embassy appointments with DACA. So like in DACA, Bangladesh. Um, I, we had our case approved as of March 30th, so it's still pretty early. But should I c- contact the embassy after three months, or like how long should I wait? If if I had to make a list, and maybe I should make a list, of the slowest embassies, number one slowest would be um, the Philippines, Manila. Number two would be Islamabad. Number three would be Dhaka, Bangladesh. The, and, and I might even move Dhaka, Bangladesh ahead of Islamabad if I really sat down and thought about it. So you got, you've got another seven, eight months before there's going to be an interview. Okay. All right. That was all I had. Thanks. That was easy. See you, bud. All right. Let's say hi to Nigel. Hi, Nigel. Hi, Jim. How are you? Thanks for having me on your show. Sure. Yeah, I appreciate what you're doing for the community. Yeah, um, yeah, just a few questions and um, so um, just a, a, a brief history and um, I applied for it five petition. Uh, my wife is an American and um, I received RFE for tax return because what we um. By last year, that was November, we didn't send a tax return because she hadn't worked like a whole year. I mean, if I had to get a W2 to find the tax return, so they asked for it now. But um, initially, when we filed, we submitted um, the household um, um, affidavit of support with all, those, with all the supporting documents. So now, when we, because I respond to the um, to the RFE, they asked for, but I did not send the um, the, um, the um, household member um, affidavit. So I'm wondering if, I mean, if that's a problem, if I needed to send it. 
Why are you messing? Why are you messing around with this? Your case is going to get denied. You're getting really close. You're really getting really close to making them mad and making them deny the case. Why are you? What if if you're well, if your spouse they didn't ask for it? Doesn't matter. They'll they'll deny it for stuff they don't even ask for. You're you're you if 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 you sent them in an RFE response, that means you're on the edge of getting your case tossed. And if your wife didn't work for a year, then most definitely you're getting close to getting your case tossed. So I don't know if she lives with other people, but she needs a co-sponsor. If you live with other people, the household people, this 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 case is on life support. You're in big trouble. And and I don't know why you you would have played around with it because you're going to have to start all over. Well, because we submitted it um, initially, the, um, the um, household supports, the affidavit of support. Yeah. And now they ask for the RFE for just a tax return, so I just send in a tax, um, send a tax return. Okay, so how much was, how much did she earn on her taxes? Um, like twenty eight thousand. It's like five hundred less than the, the minimum requirement. Okay, so you you got an RFE saying, hey, there's a problem with her eligibility to be the sole sponsor, and we need to see her tax return. So you sent her in, sent in a tax return that was below 125 percent of the poverty guideline and you just left it at that no no um really we didn't send it in each, uh, um, 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 initially when we first filed because no, i understand getting, i understand yeah. but but what i'm saying is you received an rfe and it said hey we don't have the taxes for the petitioner for yeah. last year and you went ahead and sent them the tax returns even though they say that she didn't make enough money well, they didn't say that on the on the IFE. No, they just asked. You know for, that in your you know that already. You you told yeah, me. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, why exactly. would you why would you do that? That doesn't make that your no. your your case is probably going to get denied, or you're going to get a notice of intent to deny. If they're nice, they'll give you one last chance to fix it. I think more likely they're just going to deny the case, and you're going to have to start all over. Wow. Okay. Um. Thanks very much. Yeah. Um. Um. Also, I have another question. Um. Will I be able to travel between states um, with my foreign passport, even though the, um, my visa is, is, is expired? You're going to get on a my plane? Visa. Yeah, on yeah, a, like, yeah, I would encourage you not to do that. If, you're, if, if your case is on life support, it's, I mean, I'm, Nigel, I'm really shocked that you guys, that you would be so laid back about this. This is way too laid back. You're, you're out of status. You know that you don't have enough money on the tax returns. You spent all that money to pay the filing fee, and it's most likely going to get rejected because you didn't put in a co-sponsor. Wow. wow. Um, so um, is it possible because um, um, the um, deadline they give me to um, submit, um, I'm, I'm still within the, the um, deadline. Is it possible to like just send the, the co-sponsor's information? I think that's a good idea. If you can get tax returns for three years of a good person, get the affidavit of support squared away and send it in, I would try to do that before the deadline. I think that's a very good idea. Okay, so um, I can just send it to the same address and you know, I got the RFE? With a copy. I mean, they don't like it when you send the RFE responses little by little. The, this new one might not catch up to the first one, but it seems to me that's your best chance. Okay, okay. Well, I'll try that. Thanks right, so much. Luck, Nigel. I appreciate okay, you. see you, bud. Yeah. That's the thing. I mean, a couple of things. One is when you're when you're out of status, you always got to pay more attention than the regular person. They're 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 not only are you in more danger, but also they're going to be out to get you more if they smell blood and they know you're out of status. Number two, if you get a request for evidence, you have to ask yourself, what are they actually asking for? What's the fundamental problem? And when it comes to financial stuff, you have to ask yourself and because they don't tell you the the RFEs and the notices of intent to deny that they send out for things related to the affidavit of support, it's like a hidden message. They use, they use templates and they cut and paste or they, I think they click boxes and it generates this RFE. So a lot of times there'll be problems with the RFE, but you won't be able to figure it out by reading between the lines. Basically, if you get an RFE or notice of intent to deny, they're, they're most likely telling you to start all over. Either start all over with a current sponsor or start all over with the current sponsor plus a new sponsor. So that's the that's the trick with I-864s. Let's say hi to Brittany. Hi, Brittany. Oh, hi, hi. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Okay. 
Um, so I have a couple questions. So um, we applied um, for um, the green card for my husband um, and he's Iranian um, and he served in the military, not the IRGC, but the other um, military. And the regular, we had a regular military. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot. It's arts. I forgot. I can't. Okay. What's the name? But anyway, um, we had, he had his interview um, almost seven months ago um, in Madrid, Spain. We're in Spain right now. Um, and um, he's still in administrative processing. Like, is that, is that pretty typical? I, I've, I've read online. That that's pretty typical for like Iranians and I don't know, people from Muslim <laughs> countries. Right. So you've, yeah, so you've heard about CARP. So, I mean, I've I've said many times that the hardest thing to do is to get an immigration benefit for a man from a Muslim country. But that is like on steroids when you talk about Iran. So if he has any kind of technical background or just being from Iran, that can be something where he gets stuck for, for a long time. So when did the State Department get the case from USCIS? Um, so the USCIS transferred to NBC on January 2000, January 17, 2021. And we had the interview September 28th um, last year. Yeah. So they've had it for 13 months. They've been sitting on it since September. You might think about suing them. So, um, oh, you mean, because it starts at the um, whenever the case was transferred, not with the interview. Yeah, I mean, I we we when we go in front of these judges, sometimes the government files a motion to dismiss and they say you haven't waited long enough. Um, but we we start the clock with the State Department. We used to start the clock with USCIS and say, look, this lady's been waiting to bring her husband for two and a half years. But now we, we're limited agency by agency. So this State Department has had, you know, since January of 21. So you're talking 15 months to decide whether or not they want to let him in. I think that if you sue them, they'll get working on the case most likely. In about 10% of the cases, they file a motion to dismiss and ask the judge not to pay attention to it. But I think that it's your best chance to get things going. You can wait till September when it's been a full year. I'm not I'm not trying to rush you, but I am saying yeah, that you've yeah. waited long enough. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, the, the only thing I'm worried about is I've, I've read and I've heard that you can get um, rejected. I mean, not, I don't know the proper term, but like um, after- Re refused yeah like after you file a lawsuit that's what i'm worried about i'm like mostly worried about that because i don't want to have to start the process all over again well so, so i've i've sued them we're, i think we're right at 1100 we've sued them 1100 times the state department wow. probably more than half of those and and wow. i don't feel like i i've never seen an indication that they've treated my clients differently because we sued them. It's really, Brittany, just a fast forward button. Whatever they're going to do, they're going to do. The lawsuit just makes them do it because what happens is I sue them and I mail a copy of the lawsuit to them. You don't ever go see the judge. I don't ever see the judge. They don't go to see the judge. What happens is they say, hey, where's Brittany's husband's case? Oh, that's over in Madrid. Let's, let's talk to Madrid. Hey, Madrid, where's Brittany's husband's case? Oh, Frank has that. He's down the hall. Hey, Frank, Frank. <laughs> Remember that case, Brittany's husband? Where is it? And and Frank goes, oh, yeah, that one. That's over there in that pile over there. Let me go get it. And then they pull it out and they figure out what they want to do. That's what happens in a lawsuit. And then they decide it and then we, then we dismiss it. Now, like I said, in 10% of the cases, 5 to 10%, they decide to fight me and they file a motion to dismiss. And they say, judge, Brittany's husband, he's only waited a year and three months. That's not really that long. COVID, 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 national security, COVID. Oh, and did we mention national security? Nothing to see here, judge. And then the judges just dismiss the lawsuit. So it's not that you have to start all over. It's just that you end up in the same spot you were before we filed the lawsuit. I had to send an email to a client today where that same thing happened. So, oh, so you don't start all over. You just, it would just be going, it would just be back like. Back to waiting. Back, back to, to waiting. waiting. Oh, so you wouldn't have to file again. I mean, unless unless they gave him a refusal. So 221G administrative processing, that's not a final decision. If they said he's a terrorist or a drug dealer or he committed immigration fraud, that would be a refusal and that would be the end of the lawsuit. But in, if it's they can't use yeah. they can't use 221G and claim that's a final question, a final answer. Yeah, yeah. OK, because that's what that's what I was worried about. Do you have like have you had a lot of Iranian cases? I know I read that you guys have a lot of you have. Yeah, okay. for sure. Um, I can, I mean, I don't know if you've emailed the office, but yeah, we've handled lots of overseas Iranian cases. We've handled a lot of green card and citizenship cases. I've probably filed lawsuits for 50 
Iranians, I would say. Wow, 50. And the average time it takes to get an answer is like two to three months or something? Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, one more thing. Sorry, really quick. Sorry, I know you have You're a fine. lot of people and everything. You're fine. Um, You're fine. So, so like, um, do, do you think it's possible that there, that his um, background check, whatever, like his security clearance um, with Washington, with the Department of State, do you think that that's like finished already? Is there any way to say like, oh, we haven't finished this background check? They've never done that in any case I've ever filed. They never said the background check wasn't finished because they oh. can't say that to the court because that would be a lie because the background check was done a long time ago. Wow. So, yeah, because I'm like, it takes like, it shouldn't take more than three months or something, even with COVID, right? Like, right. Especially for someone who's lie, never, so especially, they're just like, especially, especially for someone who's never been to the United States before. It's a little bit harder when the person's been in the United States. But oh. what they say in their mind is we can't. We don't feel we can do a proper security check for somebody from Iran because Iran doesn't share information with us as much as we would like. And that's mm -hmm. why they say that's that's why they say it's an extended background check, I think. Oh, OK. Yeah. OK. So, OK, I'll contact. Um, well, I've contacted your office before. I just want to talk to you personally because I I didn't yeah. talk to. And we can uh, we can talk off camera, too, if you want, if you and you and your husband want to talk to me that we can do that next week. Okay, cool, cool. And um, do you just, will you just like email me or can I email you to ask yeah, for the charge or how is that? Well, yeah. So the lawsuit costs $4,100. So it's a $402 filing fee. It's a $4,100 legal fee. It's a flat fee. Most people pay us $3,002 up front and then $500 a month for three months mm -hmm. so, that you, so that you get your answer about the time that you're done paying. Okay. Okay. Cool. Well, that's really good. Thank you so much for all of your um, sure. help and everything. And sure. I'll contact you guys. Like, um, again, I mean, I just have to tell, tell, tell my husband that I talked to you. Sure. On Facebook. sure. Yeah, Thanks, Brittany. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks so much. Have a good night. All right. Take care. We'll see ya. Bye. Yeah, bye. bye. All right. Everyone's liking the microphone. I'm glad that people are liking the microphone. Um, somebody... Why Hori said that Ramadan makes me look younger. I got a haircut today, so I think that might be it. I actually have gained eight pounds during Ramadan. So it's that late night eating and then going to bed. It's no good for your digestion. I'm looking forward to going back to my diet that I was on beforehand, um, which was sort of much more regular. So let's say hi to Gael. Hi, Gael. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Um, so I have a few questions about four or five. Um, you have a I, I had an asylum uh, case and also a VAWA case. So I received a prima facie um, and I applied for a cancellation of removal and it was granted by the judge. Uh, okay. uh, a month before my individual he uh, hearing for asylum. Right? So the first question is what happened actually to the asylum case? Is completely gone or so you received cancellation but you you haven't you haven't gotten your green card yet right no because yeah, i have so. a pending VAWA case so i use the prima facie to ask for cancellation of removal okay when you say cancellation you mean to stop the deportation is that what you mean yeah. Yes. Okay. So can't. Okay. So you mean? So did did the judge administratively close your deportation, or did they did they terminate? Do you know the difference? I I was told that it was terminated. Terminated. Okay. All yeah. right. So you had an asylum case, then you got in a relationship with a U.S. citizen. You filed a VAWA claim. Your asylum case got referred to the immigration court. You have this pending immigration court case where eventually you could be deported. You say, hold on, I got this VAWA. I got my prima facie determination. And then the judge terminated proceedings. And now you're waiting for USCIS to finish processing the VAWA application. And you're wondering what happened to the asylum application. Do I got that right? Yes. I think technically the asylum case is still there. I, I would think that it's still... It's still there in immigration court. Hopefully you won't have to go back there. Hopefully USCIS gives you a green card based on your uh, I-360 if they approve it. And then and then, then the asylum case, I mean, 
I guess in theory it could be open forever, but you'd probably want to withdraw it at some point. But if 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 nothing happened in court with your asylum case, then I think I think it's still pending. Okay, and um, are you asking because you're thinking? Are you thinking about dropping your VAWA case and proceeding on the asylum case? Don't do that. No, I'm actually um, asking because I don't know what like if I will have like a what happens actually if uh, the VAWA case is not approved, even though uh, I, I have the prima facie, you know. Yeah, I think you're okay on that. So I don't think you need to worry that much. But if your VAWA case gets denied or if your green card case based off the VAWA gets denied, I would imagine that if, if a Republican takes over in the White House, then the, then the uh, immigration court would restart your proceedings and you could still keep your asylum case as a defense to deportation. Oh, okay. okay. So at this point, do you think that I can go ahead and then apply for um, adjustment and travel permit? Well, you should, they you should be, a, yeah, you should, you should have, you, yeah. So the question is, I mean, I, I'd have to look at everything, Gael, because I'd want to see the whole, the whole record. I'd want to see what's been filed. I'd want to see what the judge did. I'd want to look at everything before I told you to go ahead and apply for your green card. But that's not a case that you should file on your own. You probably need a lawyer to help you with that. Okay. Cool. Thank you. So, and how long is it taking nowadays for VAWA to be approved? Yeah, so it's somewhere between two and three years. Oh, wow. it's been almost two years now. So. Yeah, I mean, yours is a little more complicated because you were in court. But yeah. I, I would just want to check to make sure. I would call USCIS and say, "Hey, what's going on with the 360?" Just to make sure they have it, just because you were in removal. If they have what? The, the the 360 the bawa case they do because they the, the last uh the, they're giving me uh the first time the prima facie was uh, valid for like um a year and i received the second one for six months and a week ago about two weeks ago i received the third one for another six months okay good okay yeah. all right so great. That means they, they, they're working on it right I th yeah it does okay Thanks, Gael. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Yep, bye-bye. All right, let's say hi to Asada. Hi, Asada. Hello, how are you, Jim? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm okay. Um, my questions are a little different than some of the other people. Um, okay. I'm, I'm married. Um, I'm, I just recently got married. Um, so I met my husband in 2018. Um, when we, when we first started dating, um, well, there was just some things I wasn't ready to get into a marriage at that point. So we were kind of like on again, off again. And then he ended up, we kind of split up for a while. Then he ended up getting married. I guess I wasn't moving quick enough for him. He ended up getting married. Um, and the marriage didn't work. He was married for like a year and a half. So is, his is he, is he, is is he the immigrant or are you the immigrant? He's the immigrant. I'm an American, okay. naturally born American citizen. Did the did the did that first spouse file for any immigration benefits for him? Yes. And how far did that case go? Do you know? So I from what I understand, they went through the interview process mm -hmm. and everything. And um they had two interviews and they got um what is it? The request for evidence. They submitted everything, but for after the first interview, then the second interview, they went back again. Okay. And uh, from what I understand, it was pending. Um, he like he didn't get approved or declined. After that second interview, soon after that, they got divorced, and their divorce decree was finalized in June 2021. Did after she withdraw? That, the, did she withdraw the I-130? That is where I'm not exactly sure. So according to my husband, he says that um, she had, they like initially when they divorced, um, it was kind of like a rocky divorce and that she, that she told him that she wrote a letter to immigration, but he never saw the letter of 
a letter, but it's just based on hearsay. And like she first filed the divorce based on a at fault claim, like he was at fault because the state that they were married in, you can get divorced based on fault or not. But then I guess he contested it. And then after he contested it, she withdrew that and filed the divorce, settled the divorce based on irreconcilable differences. Okay. So the divorce was finalized in one state in 2020, uh, June 2021. So then we started back dating again, like August, September of 2021. Yeah. Then we got married in early February. So after of this year, we got married mm-hmm. in February of this year. So then after we got married, um, I, there was certain information that I didn't quite either understand or maybe he didn't tell me or what, but I also found out that uh, he filed a VAWA on her. Okay. Um, and so I asked him about the VAWA and he said that the original grounds that she filed for divorce was that she felt like um, there was some kind of fault based like the way he was talking to her or something she felt like was abusive but then he contested it and then she allegedly withdrew it and did irreconcilable differences so according to the divorce decree it does say that she recanted her statement about fault and that she just wanted to follow irreconcilable differences but then after we got married um i had requested his immigration file and then um he went and got the immigration file from his attorney and like brought the paper file to me. So as I started going through it, then I found, um, I found information that he was actually previously married before her in his home country, which is Nigeria. Yeah. How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> you, you haven't seen the show before Asada. We talk about Nigerian divorces on this show. Um, uh, I saw it like twice today. I found yeah, we, you and I watched several of your videos and then I was yeah. like, Oh my God, he's going live. I got to get off. <laughs> so yeah. So he got married in 2016 in Nigeria. He came yep. here in 2018. Wait, hold on. Hold on. You forgot he, one part. You hold on. You forgot one part. He got a visit visa based on the fact that he was married. He would not have gotten the visit visa if he wasn't married. And then he either, correct. Got, he either, he either got divorced in Nigeria before he came or he got divorced when he was already in the United States so that he could marry that wife, wife number Correct. two. So as you're, soon as you're actually back here. Wife number three. You're but actually I wasn't wife aware that I was correct. And I wasn't aware well, that I was a... wife number three Got until it. after I became wife number three. Okay. You thought so you were me, just wife number two. Correct. And I thought that it was just like irreconcilable differences and such from the previous marriage. Yep. Now, um i'm also like i'm very i'm very much like a researcher and i'm one of those women like yeah i'm one of those women where i wanted to know asada's on the case asada's on the case (laughs) so so anyway so um i got the i got the immigration file and i found the divorce certificate from nigeria so then that's how i just, just real quick you got the you got the immigration file from the lawyer or from uscis or both from from the lawyer that he had Okay. He went and got it. So I'm I'm assuming that it's complete. I don't know if it's complete, mm-hmm. but he physically went and got it from the attorney. And I was mm-hmm. like, wait a minute, something in my spirit is not make things are not making sense to me. So I need to see something on paper before I go to immigration and do anything. So once I got that file in my hand, then that's when I found the divorce certificate from Nigeria, yeah. which he never mentioned that marriage. So the timeline was like he got married in 2016 in Nigeria. Moved here in 2018. We met like three days after he got here. Mm-hmm. Um, he so a few case. months, so a few months after that, he got divorced from here, but in Nigeria, like he filed it from here or whatever. They sent him the the divorce certificate. Then, like six months later, he married the ex wife here in America. Wife they got two. divorced a year. Yeah, wife number two. Yep. Then wife number two and him stayed married a year and a half. And then we got married six months later. And now I don't know. It like his work authorization just expired, like right after we got married. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it was based on. Was it based on the VAWA? Was it based on the previous marriage? And now, you know, we just got married in February. So now it's like a pressure on me 
Like he needs to hurry up and file his case because now he's out of status. And as much as I want to like support my husband, like something feels weird. So I don't want to do anything. Like I do love him. It's not like we've known each other since 2018. I know his whole family, all the things. But because of these facts that seem strange now that I'm wife number three, I'm yeah. wondering if we go to him, like, I don't even know how to know where he's at. Like if he's got a, what's going on with the VAWA, yeah. why his work authorization. And he's saying that he, you know, we got online, he gave me like his A number and like all his receipt numbers. And I like got online and like went every receipt number I found in that file from the lawyer, I like yeah. looked them all up. But that's not leading me anywhere. It's just like pending. So I don't so even is, know what is the is, current status. This is this is quite a tale, Asada. And and kudos to you for trusting your gut and listening to your instincts. That's really good that you did that. So I think one question that you might have for me is, hey, Jim, what are the chances of him getting a green card through me? Yeah, like I genuinely entered into the marriage in good yeah. faith. Yeah. And I mean, I want to believe that he is too, but now my friends and family are all like, he's a freaking scammer, but that's to be determined. He, we're living together as husband and wife. Um, yeah. But just those facts make it interesting. So what I'm concerned about is even now knowing that information, if we go and try to file, what are the chances when you, I would be wife number three and what, three and a half years, almost four years. There was one little piece. There was Go one ahead. little piece in there's one little piece in there when you mentioned the wife number two. Did did you say she sent a letter to USCIS or just said bad things she in the divorce? She stated that court? she she st so allegedly first when she initially filed, she said bad things in divorce decree. Yeah. He said that he contested it. And because it wasn't true that she was just angry and her family was trying to put her up. They didn't like Nigerians and all these other things. It was like a cultural difference and whatever. So I was like, okay, that's possible. Um, you know, because there are a lot of bad things that are said about West Africans, especially Nigerians. That's possible. Right. So right. he was like, that's why she recanted it and then filed on irreconcilable differences. But okay. he okay. also Asada. stated that she told it. him that she wrote that letter. I got it. But so I'm no going to ask, my, my wife is really, really smart. OK, and you said you've watched the show once or twice, but let's just say, Asada, if you were me, if you were me hearing what you just told me, what advice would you give to yourself? <laughs> well, I've got my own things, but I kind of wanted to hear. Yeah, I'll tell you what I think. But what advice if your best friend came and told you this story or like you said, your family members are talking to you now. If you're, if somebody told you this story, what would you tell them? I, I wouldn't trust them. Yeah. I mean, let's, let's just start, let's just talk without even getting into any emotional stuff. Let's just talk like this, Jim, what are the chances of my husband getting a green card through VAWA, through me or through anyone else? Chances of that are under 5% under 5%, even if your marriage is completely legit. And I've talked about this on the show before. I've had plenty of cases where marriage number three or marriage number two is completely legit. But USCIS uses marriage number one or marriage number two as a club to deny the green card, even though they'll say, yeah, sure, Asada, we believe your marriage is real. But Mr. X was married in Nigeria. He lied to us to get that visit visa. Either that wasn't. Well, I don't know marriage. if it was a lie. Yeah. I, I, I know. I'm I know. not going to say that. Th th these these are the kinds of things. I believe it was that, a legitimate these, marriage. Yeah. The, these are the kinds of things that they say, though. The problem with do you know do you know about Nigerian divorce decrees? Yeah, I did a little research, and people are saying that it's hard to prove if they're real or not. And and USCIS assumes that they're fake. So we have a person who's been married to three different people, who probably most likely has a fake divorce decree who filed a VAWA case, which makes it seem like he's just doing everything he can to keep his work hard going so that he can keep working. And now he's on to wife number three to keep the whole thing going. That's how it's going to look like to them. I, what, where, Even if our marriage is a thousand percent legitimate. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to still yeah. think that. 
Oh yeah, I get I I could if if I could redact the names, I could send you probably three or four, you know, uh, denials, Nigeria, merit multiple marriages, fake divorce decree. We talk we talk about it on the show all the time. Okay, so assuming that the divorce decree is real. That's a I I I I think that the chances of that, especially when the only time that I've seen where the divorce is real is when the 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 person who's applying for the immigration benefit was actually in the courtroom with the judge when the d- divorce was given. I think there's people in Nigeria making fake, fake divorce decrees left and right. And I'm not saying it's, wow. it's the people, I'm not saying it's the immigrants fault because a lot of times what will happen is like in his instance, the wife back in Nigeria will get the divorce, but they'll just pay this lawyer who makes a fake divorce. And then they send it overseas to the person here and they don't really even know that it's fake. And then, and then they get, they don't get immigration benefits for having, I mean, there was somebody on the show yesterday talking this exact same story yesterday or, or Friday. Friday Is it still online? Can I find it? Yeah, it was Friday or yesterday. Yeah. It's still, if you just, I think it was, I think it was yesterday. Everyone will know in the comments. I think it was yesterday, but it was, it was um, towards the end of the show, either yesterday or Friday. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. So this, this is something so, we talk about. We talk about it all the time. Okay. So I didn't know. I was kind of scared because it, like it seems like mostly people are like trying to get their case approved. But like, I just from a legal standpoint, you know, I just I don't like getting any. Um, I don't want to get into a situation where, as much as I love my husband, I don't want to get to immigration and then they start trying to accuse me of like something. And my husband and, swears that it's not, but and, it's just, and, and it looks bad. Definitely, definitely there's that aspect of it that you get lumped in with, with him. Um, but also, the, the, I mean, green getting a green card, yeah, it was yesterday. Everyone said it's yesterday. Getting a green card and going through this process with him for the next year and a half is an emotional thing. You're going to invest a lot of time and energy in something that whether you do the best job possible, if you hired me, and I did my best job possible, and I proved up this marriage, and I knocked down the problems with the divorce decree, and I knocked down the problems with wife number two. If I did my best job, I might be able to get it from 5% to 10% chance of success. So you have to so ask you yourself- you believe that you only have a 10% chance of winning this case, even though the marriage is real? Yeah. Yeah, in fact- Wow. In fact, That's Asada, freaking scary. Asada, That's I signed so up- scary. I signed up. I signed up a case roughly similar. There was more of a ten year. There was actually a ten year gap between wife number two and wife number three. But the guy was out of status. I loved wife number three or the wife number two. I love. I, I like. I like you, right? I really liked her a lot, and she she convinced me that the marriage was real. I signed up the case. I signed up the case. I took her money, and everybody in the office yelled at me. My paralegal Florencia in Washington D.C. She said, Jim what are you thinking? We can't win this case. And everybody yelled at me and everybody pounded on me. And we gave the lady all of her money back because they were right. I got too emotional and too excited. So I, I, because you you cared for the wife who really loved her spouse. Yeah. And and I care for, I care for, I care for you. I mean, it'd be, it'd be the easiest thing in the world for me to say Asada. Oh, no problem here. Send me five thousand dollars, and I'll save you and your husband. That's not how I do things. No, that that means a lot to me because I've been torn because I do love him. Yeah. You know, I've been so torn, but like I just got married in February, and like I'm I'm also half Nigerian, but I was born here, and I was raised here. So there's like a cultural pressure now where it's like we don't get divorced, and like being i've never well, been married before i don't have kids so now everyone's like oh you can't divorce your husband you can't leave him when it's hard and i'm like shit i don't know what to do i don't want to be stuck in this like rut you know, and, and i think i think that you could make an argument a very good argument for an annulment because in you texas didn't... you can't get an annulment after 30 days we got married on you... february 14th i'm not a divorce attorney but i bet when there's fraud you can and and fraud would include not telling me about a prior spouse in Nigeria. That would be fraud. That'd be something you found out after February 14th. That'd be something you found out that changed the dynamic. And if if not a a a 
state government annulment, a religious annulment or whatever. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, anybody who's given you pressure doesn't know the whole story. You've got one life to live, Asada. You got one life to live. And this is I'm getting into the realm of lifestyle stuff versus immigration stuff. But um, I don't want you to set yourself up for these two years of heartache. And you're going to be a lot sadder now. It's a lot, sad, lot, lot, a lot sadder then than you are now. It's sad. This is sad. Um, and I just think, I think, I think you could get it. And no, I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. You're fine. But if, if my wife were here or if anyone in my office were here, like think of all my whole office here standing here behind me, they would say, we're sorry, but this is not a case you want to move ahead on. So you think I should just divorce him? Because there's nothing he can do. Like we we can't stay married because he's not going to be able to work or anything. Basically. Yeah, but I think I think you have integrity, and you were worried about what it's going to happen at the interview, and I think that's completely legitimate. But I also think that this is going to take a huge emotional toll on you for the next two years. And I don't think you have anything to be sorry for. I don't think you have anything to feel bad for. If anyone in your family's giving you trouble, tell them to shut the F up. Tell them to watch this video. <laughs> tell them to watch this video. And there we go. Okay. Thank you so much, Jim. I'm sorry, Sada. Call our office if you need me, okay? Thank you. All right. Hang in there. Oh, man. Oh, man. That was rough. That was rough. I feel bad for her. Man, she's a good person, don't you think? I think she's a good person. She's a sincere person, just trying to do the right thing. To me, the tell is that she he knew her earlier and she didn't move fast enough is what she said early at the beginning. Then he jumps and gets married to wife number two. And then when that doesn't work out, he's flailing around for whatever works. And he lands on Vawa and he's like, oh, yeah, what about what about old Asada? What, that's right. Robert's right. He does not deserve her. He does not deserve her. She's a good person. I really liked her a lot. Um, and I'd rather have this conversation with her now than a year and a half from now because that's a whole lot of water under the bridge. Let's say hi to Hannah. Hi, Hannah. Hi, Jim. Uh, you have a big heart for everybody. I love you. Thanks. That makes yeah. me sad. That, was, yeah. that, that made me sad. But you are the best, you know, uh, especially mm. you, you, you let the people to talk, you know. It's, it's yeah. really, you, you didn't get uh, anybody can listen to you, but you are special. Uh, yeah. I love you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. What can I help uh, you with? Uh, okay, uh, I have uh, asylum uh, pending. It's uh, it's already uh, denied uh, from my uh, USCIS. Yeah. And I was in a court uh, for a master hearing. And uh, the judge uh, gave me another master hearing. And uh, it should be on August 6th. But he sent me a letter. Uh, he canceled the hearing. Um, he will uh, schedule a, another time, he said. Um what I have to do uh, when I submit uh, for my EAD uh, renewal before uh, they, they denied my uh, asylum, until now, I didn't uh, get my uh, authorization employee, you know? And I submit for uh, TPS. I get approval uh, on April uh, 14. And now uh, I want to submit... Uh, application for employment authorization according to the this new category you know for tps uh, yes yeah you should uh, i can yeah you can and you should yeah for sure okay if i submit it that means uh i have to choose a uh, initial permission uh, accept employment or renew i'd say initial because uh, it's uh, it, it, it's on a different basis, so I would say initial. Uh, even initial, though, even, even, the even though you already had it. Yeah, yeah, even the immigration status, uh, not pending asylum. It's a visitor, B2, just uh, like that. Uh, no, I'd say asylum seeker. I, no, in there, I'd, I mean, I can't tell you how to fill out the forms, but I would say TPS. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. 
uh, is uh, all the TPS under uh, category uh, 812 or what? I don't know, Hannah. I'd have to look it up. I don't. I don't fill the forms out, so I don't know. But I don't, oh, okay. I, th there should be there. There should be a category for TPS EADs. Yeah. Okay, that means I can uh, I can submit uh, uh, asking for uh, new employment even it doesn't come until now the uh, the one I submitted before. No That's problem. That's right. No problem. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it, Jim. I Thanks, Hannah. You. Ramadan okay, Kareem. Bye. See ya. Bye. Bye. All right, let's say hi to Sunshine. Hey, Jim. How are you? I'm good. Ramadan Kareem. Thank you. Same to you. Okay, so this, I got a question. I, I know she's going to kill me, but I got to ask. Uh, my sister, we came to the United States together. So um, we applied for asylum and we went to court and get granted. So when we got here, she married somebody. So the guy is out of status for over 20 years. And we later found out that we knew he was married, but we didn't know the marriage was fraudulent. And uh, now that she's, uh, she applied I-730 for her, for him, and uh, um, now she is worried, she is worried that, <laughs> don't mind her, she is worried that it might jeopardize her case because, um, because of him being out of status and that fraudulent marriage marriage and also the guy has not been filing taxes the whole time he's lived here until he he uh he applied for i730 so, so right now a problem right, for her? your sister your sister doesn't have her green card yet no not yet she's waiting since uh last year january when did, okay so when did the judge give her uh asylum in uh, january of 2020 and then in january of 2021 she applied for a green card yes sir and that, that's still pending yes sir and then she married someone is that right yeah she or married she's... she married him before uh applying asylum she married him i'm sorry when uh before applying for asylum in 2015 before applying for asylum so was he included yeah. in her asylum case or no yes he is is he outside the united states or here he's here so did he get asylum too? No. He, she filed an I-730 for him. After she got asylum? Yes. Okay. When she, when she went to the immigration judge, did they ask whether she was married or not? Did the court know that she was married when she got asylum? Yes, they asked, yeah. But, but he wasn't included in the application at that time? He was. He was, okay. Yes. All right, so... So she's worried. So, so now when you say he had a fraudulent marriage, you mean he's, he's, he was married before and got in trouble for a fraudulent marriage and overstayed. Yes. And now she's worried. Is that going to hurt her getting her green card? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's pretty messy. I think, I think it'd be important for her to talk to a lawyer and have someone look at everything. Okay. So um, if she was to file divorce and get divorce from him, is this is that still gonna hurt her case? Um, I think I think here's what I would say. Mm -hmm. I think that she might get a green card interview, and it's gonna mm -hmm. be really important to see how she frames it when she goes okay. to her green card interview. So it's important. What I would what I would say if I were her is I would do mm -hmm. a complete request a request of her complete immigration file of his mm -hmm. complete immigration file. And then I would make sure that she's able to talk about all of it at the interview. Okay. I'll tell her that. Thank you so much. Bye, Sunshine. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Welcome, Salam. All right, everybody. That'll do it for today's show. We're out until Monday. We'll be back 1 o'clock Monday. I'll see you then. Thanks for tuning in. That was a heck of a show. We feel bad for Asada. We feel bad for everyone who's having a hard time with immigration. I hope you all have a great weekend. I'll see you next week.